let's have a look on maximum power theorem. Let's see the difference between maximum power theorem, Norton's, and Theoretics. The only thing is that in maximum power theorem, your output resistance is not given to you from where you need to find the value. Because it says you get maximum power only when your load resistance is equal to your calculated evidence resistance, or you can say your calculated modern resistance. Your RN is equal to RDH is equal to RN in maximum power theorem. So that's the basic funda under maximum power theorem. So let's have a look. Your step number one is nothing but your VTH. Your VTH is across your load resistance. So your load resistance is over here. So this is nothing but a variable load resistance. So you just need to remove this resistance and write A and B. So open circuit the load resistance plus minus 2VX a resistance 1 ohm minus plus Vx. Since you have a current source in series with a resistance, your resistance is short circuit. So this property is known as redundant property. This property is known as redundant property. So, so your resistance will be short circuit. You will be having only your current source. The value is a one amperes voltage two volts. You will be having a and b. Since you have removed your load resistance, now, now let's use the previous steps as it is. Step number one A as positive, B as negative. Between A and B, write VTH. Step two. Step three Any path from A to B. First path, second path. Step four Select the shortest path without having a current source. So, your available path will be only this. After selection of the shortest path, you need to give sign dimension. The sign dimension is given only by current source. I cannot write I2 here over here because the circuit is open. So I need to use the sign convention for the resistance in my selected path. So this was my selected path. In this I had only one resistance. So I need to give sign convention to be plus minus. Now, write the equation for VTH in the clockwise direction. So let's write the equation which you will be getting my good friend will be applying KVF from A to B. We get so when I say a clockwise, it enters into negative, so it will be positive, my good friend. It enters into Positive, it will be negative 1. I know. It enters into negative, it will be positive. It enters into positive, it will be negative 3. So your negative VTH, if you shift over here, you will be getting positive. So your logic says the equation which you will be getting, my dear friend, from this shift VT on that side, so you will be getting. Vth equal to 2Vx minus I1 plus 2. The equation should be only in terms of unknown current, that means I1, I2, I3, and so on. I don't need Vx. If I don't need Vx, that means I can find the relation of Vx in terms of unknown current. So let's find the equation for Vx. So if you also circuit carefully, my dear friend, V is equal to IR. For V, I'll be writing Vx. Vx is across which resistance? It's across 1 ohm. Which current is flowing? You will say I1. I1 is entering into positive Vx or negative Vx? You will say negative. So that's your equation for Vx. Put the value for Vx in our equation. So it will be Vth equal to it will be minus 2 I1 minus I1 plus 2. So your Vth will be equal to minus 3 I1 plus 2. I cannot find Vth unless and until I find out I1. So first I need to find I1. If I need to find I1, my dear friends, I'll observe carefully in my mesh number one. I cannot apply KVF. Reason behind it because I have a current source. If I have a current source, I have only one V that 
I'll get the value for them directly. If I say directly, that means observe it, the direction of icon and your current source is the same direction or in opposite direction. If you say it is in opposite direction, that means I know will be equal to minus 1. So your VTH will be my dear friend. 3 plus 2. So your VTH will be equal to 5 volts. That will be your sum number. Step number 1. So let's do it for step number 2 for maximum power theorem. Your maximum power theorem in step number 2 is again nothing but your current source. So either you say it ISC, either you say it IM, it's not the same thing. So again, draw the original circuit. The only thing is that, my dear friends, wherever you have a low resistance, you have to short the low resistance. At that point, you will be getting your short circuit time. So let's solve it. Let's draw the circuit. You have the circuit, a dependent voltage source, plus minus. You have two Vx. You have one ohms, minus plus Vx. You have again a one ohm resistance. You have a current source. Two volts. This is your load resistance, which you will be shorting for finding your IS current. So you have two loops, so you'll be writing I1 and I2. Since, as you said, you have a property known as redundant property, when there is a current source and series of the resistance, you short the resistance. So you have to neglect the resistance and short the resistance. So you have two unknowns, two equations, let's do it. Can you apply KVL over here? No current source. Over here? No current source. That means this is the example for superposition. You have two unknowns, two loops. Let's apply it. Apply KVL in super mesh. We get your I1 is flowing across one ohms. Your I2 is flowing across zero resistance. Equal. The voltage is you have two. Your I1 enters into negative, so it will be positive. Your I2 enters into negative, it will be positive. So I need to find Vx. So V is equal to IR. For V, I'll be writing Vx. For R, I'll be writing 1. Which current flows across this is nothing but I1. Your I1 enters into negative. So my value for Vx is equal to minus I1. So put the value over there. So your I1 equal to, this will be 1 I1 plus 0 I2. Equal to will be 2 into minus I1 plus I2. So the equation which you get from this condition is simplify it, you'll be getting I1 plus 2 I2 I1 equal to, so this will be 3 I1 equal to 2. So I1 will be 2 divided by 3. So divide the value for 2 equal to 3, you'll be getting. 0 0.66 amperes that will be for IRE for I1. So let's use the second equation for super mesh. The second equation which you get, you get from the current source. The current source that you have over here is 1 amperes. Observe carefully which current I1 or I2, which current is following the current source, you will say I2. So if you say I2, you will need to put up I2 as positive and I1 as negative equal to the current source value is I2. You already got the value for I1. So put the value for I1 is equal to 0 0.66 plus equal to 1. So your value will be 1.66 amperes. You got the value for I2. That's not the case. You wanted the value for I1. So let's write the value for ISC. Your ISC and I2 are in the same direction. So sign will be positive, which will be equal to 1.66 amperes that's your step number two. So now you'll be doing your step number three. Your step number three is your equivalent circuit. Okay. In this case, you don't need to provide equivalent circuit. First thing you need to find the resistance before finding equivalent circuit. So your step number three is equal to V is equal to IR. For V, 
you have read news for I, you have ISC. Over here, you need to write R news. So, the value for VTH, you have already found the IS, you are finding, you need to find VTH. So, this will be VTH upon IS. Just put the value for VTH in this, the, in the above equation, you will get it. The circuit which you got is nothing but your 5. And the circuit value for IS which you got is 1.66. So, from this, your RTH value will be 5 divided by 1.66 which you get is 3.0 ohms that's the value for RTH since you said in circuit is maximum power theorem your RN is equal to RTH is equal to 3.01 ohms so, your step number 4 will be your equivalent circuit from this. Your equivalent circuit will be in terms of maximum power will be VTH in series with RTH in series with RL. So, you've already found the value for this nothing but 5 volts. You got the value for RTH, this is equal to 0 0.1 ohms. Since RL is equal to RTH is equal to 3.01 ohms, so from this you'll be finding the value for your current. So your load current will be equal to IL will be equal to VTH upon RTH plus RL. So your IL is it equal to 5 volt divided by 3.01 plus 3.01 so your yeah, IL will be equal to so be 5 volt divide by bracket 3.01 plus 3.01 bracket close so the value will be 0 0.83 amperes so that's not that this was the only the equivalent circuit my condition is in maximum power theorem I need to find maximum power when I say about power, the power is defined as V squared TH upon 4 RTH. So put the value of, this will be of 5 square upon 4 into, your RTH value is 0 0.3.01. So your value will be in numerator, you will be getting bracket bracket plus 5 square divided by, and denominator will be getting bracket 4 into 3.01 bracket close so value which you got is 2.07 watts that will be your power of your circuit so that's it which you have learned in maximum power theorem that's the only difference in maximum power theorem apart from Thevenin's and Hopkins our initial three steps is as good as Thevenin's and Hopkins the only last two steps you need to take care of it that is not equal your equivalent circuit in which your load resistance is equal to your calculated resistance or you can say the equivalent resistance and your last step which you say you need to find the power because your theorem itself says maximum power so at the end you need to find the power which you got 2.07 watts thank you so much signing in